We went to a private school and it's like we're little peons that graduated from about 30 of us went to Grand Prix High and it's kind of neat, you know. How's it feel for you? For me, it was like I knew, I knew no one going into Grand Prix High my freshman year, so it's like I spent my freshman year by myself. And then uh, finally I opened up and so it's like, a, it's like an honor. I mean,
everyone. I'm Brad Wright from Channel 5 News, and this is Yearbook Video. As you look back on 1987-88, it can perhaps best be described as a year of trauma and drama. It was the year the wife of prominent Dallas minister Walker Rayleigh was found nearly strangled to death in the garage of the family home. Suspicion focused on Rayleigh when it was discovered he'd been seeing another woman and the two had discussed marriage. She's a Dallas psychologist, Lucy Papillon. Rayleigh, though, has never been charged with any crime. He and Miss Papillon have moved to San Francisco. Peggy Rayleigh remains in a coma. It's late Thursday afternoon in the hill country of Texas, July 16th. Rain starts falling and keeps falling. It rains all night, thus setting the stage for the worst flooding along the Guadalupe River in 50 years. And caught right in the middle of it, a church bus and van filled with school kids from our area. Unable to outrun the floodwaters, the vehicles are swept away. And despite a massive rescue effort, 10 youngsters are lost. One of them, 17-year-old John Bankston Jr., to this day, has not been found. In September, a wonderful wow. event that many Texans will never forget. Pope John Paul II came to San Antonio. It was a visit that touched off a frenzy that swept across the state. Hundreds of thousands came to the Alamo City to hear the pontiff's message, a message that meant something to each and every one of them. For 58 hours in October, the nation and most of the world turned its attention to Midland, Texas. While playing with friends in her backyard, 18-month-old Jessica McClure fell into an abandoned well. She's a For the next two and a half days, an army of rescue workers toiled around the clock, digging down below Jessica, then tunneling up to her. When at last little Jessica was carried from her underground tomb, the world smiled and cried. Nationally, it was the year of Ollie North. Jim and Tammy Baker, Donna Rice, Jimmy Swigert, the year of the stock market crash and bank failures. An incredible year for news, much of it heartwarming, a lot of it heartbreaking. A year in which we learn to expect the unexpected. I'm Brad Wright, Channel 5 News. Grand Prairie, one of our high school teams of the week during football season. We had such a great time at your pep rally. Woo. Of course, I don't look like someone in your class. I'm not because... Well, I'm the guy inside the radio who says all this stuff that doesn't make any sense, but I'm there every night, 6 to 10. I'm Jimmy Steele from the Rock and Roll Eagle, and you make my job very easy, Grand Prairie. You guys have been very nice to me all along the way, and, and the least I can do is just say hey on your tape and be a part of your videotape to surmise the year 1988. That's so symmetrical. It's going to be long gone. Before you know it, you'll be having insurance and boring things and jobs and responsibility and kids here. Well supposed to be positive here, not negative, right? Anyway, 88, you'll think of all the great songs that really, really made the year worthwhile to you. And instead of leaving with a picture of my face, how about these songs? And what were you doing while they were popular? with their permanent vacation CD, Angel, Dude Looks Like a Lady, big hit records thanks to you, and thanks for listening to all of them, and thanks for listening to me, Jimmy Steele, at the Rock and Roll Eagle, and have a great 88, and I hope the future holds everything your heart desires. Can you be scary? What do you think of this? <laughs> you like it? One of the most popular movies in 1987-88 had to be Beetlejuice, a wild zany look at the afterlife starring Mr. Mom, Michael Keaton. Movies in 1987-88 became box office hits for a number of reasons. They were outrageously funny and bizarre like Beetlejuice, or scary and frightening like Fatal Attraction. When a movie becomes a big hit, it's not uncommon to see it make over a hundred million dollars. For every movie that hits the big time, there's at least a dozen more that flop. Watch closely, here's a sampling of the movie hits 
of 8788. 25 unpaid parking tickets, and it's your car, so we have to take you in. Wait. Eddie Murphy has the touch of gold. Beverly Hills Cop 2 topped the list in 1987 at $157 million. Arnold Schwarzenegger had the same Midas touch. Predator was a science fiction war film that wasn't as good as The Terminator, but still made mega millions. And then there's Sylvester Stallone, who grunted and groaned through Rambo 3. His longest line in the entire movie was seven words. 1987 and 88 will also be remembered as the time Paul Hogan as Crocodile Dundee took the country once again by Australian storm. And Dallas actor Lou Diamond Phillips did the same in his first movie role as Richie Valens in La Bamba. Last night never happened and I'm going to marry him and you and I are going to take this to our coffins. And then there's Cher, who surprised everyone by winning the Oscar for Best Actress for a wonderful little Italian movie called Moonstruck. And Robin Williams didn't win an Oscar, but he was nominated for Good Morning Vietnam, one of the funniest movies in years. And television news tripped its way into the movie theater with broadcast news. I don't want to lose my family. And finally, some movie audiences literally ran frightened out of the movie theater as Michael Douglas and a crazy Glenn Close mixed passion and murder in Fatal Attraction. Whatever resentment she's feeling, she's probably got it out of her system. What if she didn't get it out of her system? What then? Ah! Fatal attraction. I guess you thought you'd get away with it. Well, you can. 8788 had many other distinguished films. The Last Emperor won the Oscar for Best Picture. Steve Martin had a rubber nose in Roxanne. Tom Hanks became a child in Big. And Bill Cosby made the worst movie of the decade a mess called Leonard Part 6. That's a look at some of the best, and in Cosby's case, the worst movies of 1987-88. I'm Gary Cogill. Channel 8 News.